Were you really happy with the way that, with the way that A2 turned out? I was very happy with it. They had to cut some of the scenes. Uh, like Burt Young in the original play Rape Scene. There's a rape scene. They had to cut that because uh, they said that it was too upsetting to the audience because they, they screened, when they screened it, that the audience was too upset by that scene. It was a very brutal scene. Damiano wanted that in there, that, that he really brutalizes not only his children, but he really brutalizes his wife. Wow. Yeah, so that's cut. That's actually one of our questions. One yeah. Scene, you know, what scenes got cut? That was a big scene that got cut. That was a, that was a really powerful scene. Um, and I think a lot of women were upset about it too. But you know what? It was Damiano meant to upset people. It wasn't like a nice rape. <laughs> it wasn't like really a violent rape. Some of the other things that got cut was the incest scene, because mm -hmm. uh, there was more to that than then they kind of brought it down because apparently that was a big controversial thing to the rape scene, the incest scene were the two controversial scenes. Right. And um, I'm sure there were other little things got, that got cut, but those are the two main things that got cut. I saw one at one point, there was one scene with Burt Young where he was like sitting at a table outside and he was sitting at this table and he was like uh, cleaning one of the guns. Yes, cleaning the gun of the guns. That got cut. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for reminding me. Yeah, yeah that got cut because I don't, you know, I'm not sure what their reason was. That got cut. So these little snippets, that, that was another, that was got cut. I guess they, uh, I don't know why. I'm not sure what the, what the logic behind that cut was. But I know. Probably just a pacing kind of thing. Or yeah, it, it could have it been how they cut it. And controversial oh, themes, yeah, including yeah, an yeah, incestuous yeah, yeah, relationship yeah, 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 between Sonny Montelli and his teenage sister, that are based loosely on Ronald DeFeo Jr. and his sister Don, and a rumored incestuous relationship. What, Ooh, what were you told about that? Nothing. You, nothing. Nothing. So that's interesting. I wonder if Jack and Diane were told anything. I, 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 I don't know. You know, the scene that was cut was a scene that Damiano actually added in the script. Okay. It's more sexual and more, more you know, graphic. more graphic. Uh, that was the scene that was cut because people were, it was like a theme at that time that was like very taboo. Um, and I think Damiano added that. Now whether he got that from reading about the possibility of the real sister, and the brother having it, that I don't know. And unfortunately, he passed away this year, so is, can't is, ask him. There were claims made as early as 1970. Ah, OK. And whether there was any validity to it or not, not we don't yeah. really know. But there, were, there was claims of it. And your, mm. character, your character in particular, you, your character figured out what was yes, going on. Yes, because of the, the, what happens at the birthday party right. between. Right. And, and I try to make it a, su a surprise. Like it really hits me that I see it now where I didn't see it before. So it has to be come from a point of view where it is just that understanding. That's when I grab her and say, what did you do with your brother? What did you do? And I slap her. Right. Very powerful scene. And, and uh, I thank you. I, yeah, because I think that that was. Um, did you, did, how did you get into, how did you get into character for that? What did you, what were you thinking about? I mean, were you thinking about a situation between a brother and a sister? What, what, what's your mental process to prepare for a scene like that? I, 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 well, first of all, I had to believe. You had to be very disgusting. Well, I had to believe that. Well, I treated Jack and, and Diane like they were my kids. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You know, uh, even when we were friends, I, I still kind of treated them like they were my kids. So when I look at the possibility of what they did and how it would affect their lives forever, that that was that realization that they don't know what that means, what they've done. That you know that people suffer from this in the years to come, that the consequences are so enormous. That I I, I use that premise. I you just use that premise as if they were my kids and if they've done something that they have 
no idea where. And God forbid that my husband should find out about it. Right. You know, it's something I can't even tell, I can't even share with him because there would be, you know, such right. violent right. consequences. The night that you guys, the night that the family is murdered in the film. Yes. And, you know, the, the argument between you and him going on behind the bedroom door. Yes. You know, where she's talking about our family is disgraceful, you know, kind of thing, which that was as close as you can get to, to yeah, to, tell to telling him that. Him that. Right. Yeah. No, Damiani, the director, was just terrific. He was, he was, it was actually his vision of that script that made it the way it was, because I think something had to do, we talked about it, I think it had to do with his fact that he's a Roman Catholic from Italy. Okay. So I think a lot of it was the conflict of the good and the evil, mm -hmm. you know, good right. versus evil, the right. church versus the devil, right. God and the devil. Right. So I think his vision was to do it this way. And it was, I always think, I always think of Amityville too as an adult horror film, mm -hmm. a horror film for adults. Because mm -hmm. it, 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 it deep, There is deep, that theme of good versus evil. And right. all the, 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 the abuse, the, uh, the violence, the, uh, the dysfunctionality of the relationships, I think these are all adult themes. And even though I think, I would not recommend it for young kids, like some, some films you could make, make, recommend for young children, but I, I saw think... It when I was seven. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, well, I'm here I am wrong. I mean, some, I guess some people can deal but with it. But I didn't it. turn out normal either, so, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know what I like about this movie now? I think it holds up. I think it really holds up. I think that's why it's finding a new audience. I think it holds up today, which, I can't say for a lot of movies. Some movies don't hold up. You think, okay, but I think this one holds up. But it seems I, to be increasing for the story. Would you say it's amazing? It's finding a whole new audience. It's like, it's well. Also, I've got to tell you, Quentin Tar Tarantino said that Amity of Will Two is the best sequel made. Well, I mean that's that's really wonderful, and but I think there's an audience that's finding this movie. I think this movie kind of disappeared for a while, and then it's they're finding it again, and they're because um, Melbourne, Australia, just had a big four-day film festival, and they opened it with Amityville too because they loved it, and there's a whole audience now in England for it, mm -hmm. and so and there's a resurgence in America for it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that this is like wonderful. It only goes show you if you live long enough. <laughs> you yeah. kind of come back in vogue. Everything old comes back, <laughs> back again. Well, I'm here in, uh, in San Francisco because tomorrow at the wonderful Castro Theater, which again, I'm going to quote Quentin Tarantino because he said if he had any theater in the world, he would love his movies to open in. It's the Castro Theater because it's this amazing 1700 theater. It was built in the early 20s, so it's all this art deco and the chandeliers, and it's just an awesome space. So tomorrow at 7.30, we're having a Mother's Day event with Mommy Dearest. Uh, with, which is going to be a scream fest because almost everybody knows these lines and they have a chance to scream them out with with the cast, with the actors. And then there's going to be a wonderful um, impersonator of Joan that's going to be there, a very, very famous person. And um, then there's going to be, a, a, I'm, I'm going to help judge the best look-alike Joan dress-up which is going to be really hard. I don't know how I'm going to do it because I know everybody's going to be just fabulous. And then I'm going to read from my unpublished book, soon to be published, hopefully, because I haven't quite finished it. It's like 95% finished. Uh, but I'm going to read excerpts from my Mommy Dearest Diary, which I wrote during the shooting of the movie. And then uh, there's going to be an autograph signing afterwards. So it's going to be, and it's going to be a full, full fun, filled evening. <laughs>